Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Jessie and today I am doing a Q&A that is centered more around booktube, being a booktuber, my own kind of personal reading journey, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna get right into it. There were a lot of questions that you all had, which I so appreciate you all sending me your questions. So I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can. So we'll start off with one that was asked a couple different times in a little bit of different ways each time. And it's generally just what is my reading schedule? How many pages do I read in a day? How do I kind of balance reading with a baby and that sort of thing? So my reading routine has obviously had to change ever since having a baby uh, that has kind of slowed down the reading in a lot of ways but I still have a couple of things in my life that I am very very fortunate to have like a job that allows me to work from home every day and also having a job that allows me at some points being able to listen to audiobooks depending on what I'm doing for the day sometimes I'm doing some really tedious spreadsheet type of work where I can just kind of zone out in an audiobook um, as well as now having a baby that goes to sleep pretty early so to kind of lay out what my daily schedule looks like I wake up and usually I wake up when my baby wakes up and then once I get her situated I kind of start uh, work for the day and during work I'm really not able to read a whole lot and depending on the day I either could be listening to an audiobook or if it's not a task that allows me to listen to an audiobook I won't do any reading for the day but usually if, if it is a task that allows me to listen I can listen to audiobooks at two times the speed so let's say on average I'm able to to listen to an hour to two hours of an audiobook, which would actually end up being two to four hours of that audiobook since I'm listening at two times speed, which is where I get a lot of my reading done. So depending on the day, I could listen to a good chunk of an audiobook. And then after work, I tend to finish up early evening. And that is when my baby goes down for a nap. So during that nap, she usually takes about 30 minute naps, 30 to 40 five minutes and I usually read during that time that is my time to read and just kind of decompress from the day so that's kind of a sprint for me I try not to do anything else during that time because I know that the minute she wakes up that's when I'm gonna be busy with her busy with any cooking or whatever other errands I have to do for the day um, that's gonna happen once she wakes up again and then after that I don't really read again until her bedtime and her bedtime is anywhere between 8 and 9 so once she goes down for bed I pull out my book usually and I read and that is where I'm able to get the majority of my physical book reading done and I'm able to read for like hopefully anywhere between two and three hours that's like my goal um, at night unless I fall asleep earlier because I'm so exhausted so that's kind of the rough outline of my day of reading and this is like an average day but some days I'm able to read way more some days it's not at all so it really just depends on the day and then weekends I really try to read as much as I can and I'm not a speed reader I think someone asked like how many pages I read um, in a given hour or something like that um, I'm not a speed reader or anything like that I can probably read one page in one minute so if it's an hour has gone by it's usually about 60 pages depending on the book you know if it's a young adult book um, then maybe I can get through it a bit quicker because maybe there's not quite as many words on a given page uh, but if it's like a dense fantasy or sci-fi book that's typically my my rate someone asked since I listen to so many audiobooks um, why do I also have physical copies of those books that I listen to on audio that's a great question so typically what I do is <laughs> take you through my process um, I am weird in that I don't listen to an audiobook of a book that I don't already own with a few exceptions like maybe there's a nonfiction or something like that that I'll listen to but in general if I'm listening to an audiobook it's only of an audiobook of a book that I own the reason being <laughs> I if I end up loving that book okay right like let's say I listen to an audiobook and I'm like oh my god I love that book so much I, it's one of my favorites I have the hardest time 
rationalizing in my brain going to buy a physical copy of that book that I love, that I like want to own, I, I like never do it. I have so many books that I've read like on ebook or on audio previously and I loved them, but I can't, I like, I can't for some reason justify it in my brain going to buy the book that I've already read because in my brain I'm like, but with this money I could buy a book that I haven't read yet and maybe I'll love that one. It is something weird going on in my brain where where I just I I have the hardest time buying books that I've already read. I have this local used bookstore. I'm so so fortunate to have this amazing local used bookstore in my town that kind of um, enables me to have this behavior because they will take my old used books um, and give me store credit in exchange. And it's, it's a really good rate that they give you typically. So that kind of justifies it in my mind where I'm like, okay, well, if I buy the physical book and I listen to it or I read it and I end up not liking it, it's no biggie because I can go in, get store credit and buy a new book with that, with that credit. So it kind of enables this behavior and and it's probably not the best behavior to have, but hey, there's worse things to spend your money on than books. So I don't mind too much. I love collecting books. So that's kind of why I have physical books, um, even if I'm just listening to the audiobook, because again, I'm only listening to an audiobook if I own the book already. It's weird. It's very weird. There was a question about, do I sometimes not want to review books if I didn't like them for purely subjective reasons? And yes and no. So there are some times where I don't want to review books because I don't know why I didn't like them. Like it could be for subjective reasons and I will say those reasons, but sometimes I don't even know like the reasons. Like I recently read um, The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman and I just, I just didn't really care about it and I don't know why. Like, it, it wasn't anything that the book was doing wrong. There are just some books in my mind that are, ah, I, I don't know why I find them so, like, average. And I, it's when I can't pinpoint a good reason and really, like, put my thoughts into words, that's when I have a hard time reviewing books. So those are the books that I don't like reviewing because it's so hard to just say, yeah, I was just, it was fine. <laughs> but there are some books where I'm like, yeah, it's, just, it's fine. <laughs> um, and then what makes me DNF a book? Um, I'm, I'm trying to get better about DNFing. And uh, it's, it's something that I used to not really do at all. And I've found that there are so many times where I'm reading a book and in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm not disliking it, but I'm not liking it, like not loving it. And in my mind, I know it's going to be three stars, but I keep reading anyway, and then it ends up being three stars. And I think it was, it used to be, you know, you just wanna see if the end's gonna save it, right? You just wanna see if like, okay, is, but the ending could like make this like really good. And it usually never does. So I've gotten better about if I feel like a book's gonna be three stars in my head, and I just am not, connecting really to characters, to the plot, just not caring, then I'm going to DNF it. Um, it's, it's like the mediocre books. The ones in the middle are the hardest to talk about. If I love, love a book, I can talk about it for days. If I really, really don't like a book, I can talk about it for days. It's the three stars that are the hardest to talk about for sure. And those are the ones that I'm, I'm seeing myself try to DNF more often now because it's just not worth it. It's not worth, there's so, so many books that I want to read and so little time. Uh, someone asked about kind of making content for booktube. Does it take the joy out of reading when you're trying to consume for booktube and, and just reading, reading, reading? Um, so for me, um, booktube has been awesome because it continues to motivate me to want to read even more like i would go through phases in my life where 
you know, I'd pick up a book here and there and, and enjoy it. I've, I was a reader very voraciously as a kid. I loved, loved reading. And then I kind of stopped in middle school, high school, college. Um, college, I started a little bit again, but it really wasn't until after college that I became like a really voracious reader again. So what I found that booktube really does is it helps me stay motivated to stay a voracious reader like i want to read all the things i think it's because i'm just continuing to hear about so many cool books that the community loves and is hyping and i'm like what ah, fear of missing out oh my gosh i have major fomo like i i find myself always wanting to read the next thing and i think where it gets tricky is there will be times where I'm reading a book that I could be enjoying, but I'll be thinking about the next read rather than enjoying that read. And I think that that's where booktube has changed my reading a little bit, where I'm constantly thinking about all the things that I want to read, but not focusing on the thing I am reading. So I, that's what I want to be more mindful about um, moving forward is really enjoying the thing that I'm reading at that moment and enjoying that and not having to think about what I could be reading. And I never used to think like that in the past until I really joined booktube. Um, but I wouldn't say it's taken the joy out of reading, at least for me. Someone asked what was my favorite video that I've made and are there any videos that I no longer like in hindsight? Um, my favorite videos are the ones that of course don't perform well and it's, um, I made two of them so far. It's the recommending books to Disney characters and then recommending books to Disney villains. Um, I'm a huge Disney fan. I used to work for Disney and a subscriber had actually suggested that video idea in the comments and I thought it was brilliant. I loved it so much. So I actually went ahead and did it and they didn't perform well, but that's okay because I love them I had so much fun picking out the books for each character that I don't even care I, I thought it was a blast and it's definitely like the most unique thing um, I think I've done and then videos that I don't like in hindsight I think you know some of my early reviews I'm not a huge fan of and just like my first videos that I've made like looking back at them I didn't have the mic. I didn't have the lighting. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I had watched a little bit of booktube but not a whole lot so i i didn't know like really anything but those are fine it's all fine you know it all it all led me here no regrets <laughs> and then um someone asked what do you think booktubers and booktube could do differently um so this one's hard for me to answer because i really feel like i can only answer for myself like what do i want to do differently um what do i think i could do differently because booktube in general is just so big now that i feel like there really is a booktuber for everyone at this point and if you haven't found them yet um, i heard this advice from a couple different folks if you search for like your favorite books in the search bar for youtube and then just type in review you will find people most likely talking about it and i'm continuing to find different people every single day i just can't believe how big booktube is. I see a lot of people talk about how booktubers only ever read the same books over and over. They only do the same types of videos over and over. And what that could be is it could be just what YouTube's algorithm is showing you uh, because YouTube's algorithm really is picking up on things that you watch right now and it's just pushing more of the same to you. It's not pushing different things to you. So unfortunately, you're not going to find it organically through YouTube. You really have to search for it. But there are so many booktubers that there, there's someone for everyone. There really is. So I think that the people who say that they're reading the same books, they see the same types of videos, I think it's because the algorithm is just pushing that to you. Because while that may be true for that little corner of booktube, there are so many corners of booktube to explore. In terms of like what I could do differently, I really, really want to start doing more of the challenge and creative type videos and i think i've had to kind of put that on the back burner this year just because you know having the baby that was really my focus and i couldn't keep up with the channel quite as much couldn't keep up with reading quite as much but um, now that we're kind of in the groove a little bit and she's getting a little bit more independent and all of that um, I have a little bit more time on my hands, so I'm really hoping next year I can maybe do some challenge videos, some 
some different types of videos. I really want to branch out in genres next year. I'm going to be doing a lot more classics, reading, modern classics, those sorts of things. So that's kind of what I want to do differently moving forward. Someone asked, do I read manga and could I please read One Piece? I I'm not a huge manga reader. I've started um, Full Metal Alchemist and I'm really, really enjoying it and I'm planning on continuing on with that. Um, I do not want to read One Piece, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know so many people love it. I know it's there's a huge, huge fandom here, um, which is awesome. I don't doubt it's spectacular, uh, but it's just so big and I have so many other books I need to read. So I'm definitely willing to branch out and try some manga and, and I definitely want to continue to at least uh, finish Full Metal Alchemist, um, but I probably won't read One Piece. I'm so sorry. I know my buddy Alan over at the Library of Alexandria loves One Piece, so if you ever want to talk One Piece, go check him out. Someone asked, do I ever get teased for reading? Uh, no, and I'm so sorry that you do. Reading is awesome, and I feel like I would have gotten teased. Um, in like middle school, high school, I feel like I would have gotten teased. But I think as you get older, uh, reading is something that you don't, you don't see a lot of people doing it in, in your everyday life. At least I don't. Um, like my circle of friends really doesn't read. Um, I have one reader friend. But yeah, like I, I feel like it, it becomes like cool again. Like I know it's seen kind of as like this nerdy thing uh, when you're like younger, but I feel like it come, becomes cool again. Someone asked if I ever considered quitting booktube, uh, like burnout. Uh, no. When I started booktube, I like went full in. I did Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I consistently was uploading and filming and doing all the things. And I think it's the hardest when you start out. And I've, I've seen someone else ask, you know, what's healthy versus unhealthy ways to grow your booktube channel. And I think the hardest, hardest thing for me was starting out because unless you have some other platform or people in your life who are readers and you already have kind of like a built-in audience when you start out, um, you start with nobody. And I was so clueless, like I didn't know anything um, really about like the community. I didn't know what Discord was, like I didn't know any of these things. So I didn't have anybody in my life who was like built in audience when I started. So I like started with nobody watching. I would get like 20 views and I was like, oh yes. Um, and I would get like a couple comments and honestly, it was fun, like, <laughs> it was really fun. Like for me, I didn't have anyone in my life to talk about reading with. So the fact that I had one comment of someone wanting to talk to me about books that I was reading, I was so ecstatic. This was just a way for me to like talk about awesome books that I was loving or rant about books that I wasn't. And if anyone was gonna listen, I was gonna be happy because I didn't have anybody before. So I think starting out, I had this attitude of like, even if I have just one person, that's enough. But I feel like there's so much pressure to like grow, grow, grow. And I can see how people can easily get discouraged if they're not growing at a certain trajectory or they're comparing themselves to how others are growing. Um, so I think it's, I think it's starting out is probably the hardest, hardest part of booktube. And where was I going with this? Because we started with, ha have I ever considered quitting? Where I was going with this was when I first started, I was going hard. I was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, let's do this. Um, and I found that I could not keep up with that. And so what I found was instead of qu quitting completely, because I, I loved I loved doing it. I loved just talking to like anyone about these books. Um, I would just cut back. I would just uh, upload a couple videos. I was really worried after the baby that I w would not have any time. I was so worried that I just was not gonna be able to keep up with it. I was worried I wouldn't be motivated anymore. And honestly, I still was, I was so excited every time I would sit down and get to film, even if I uploaded only a couple videos that month, I was still so happy. Yeah, no, I have not considered quitting. Um, I think if you start 
and you find yourself feeling burnt out, don't feel like you have to have to stay consistent, pump out all these videos. Like that's not the only way to grow. That is absolutely going to be one way you can grow is staying consistent. So one healthy way of growing your channel is definitely posting consistently. And I think that that did help at the beginning for me, for my growth. Other healthy ways to grow your channel is connecting to the community um, via discords. So if you love certain creators, usually almost all of them have discords that they run um, or at least are a part of. So join them and, and chat online with people. Uh, I met so many awesome friends uh, on booktube through my discord. Uh, so that was an awesome place to go to meet people. And that's where people will continue to meet each other and therefore build their community of readers. Um, so definitely like get involved in the community, find people through discords. Um, an unhealthy way to grow a channel is just not being yourself. I think you just have to be you. <laughs> um, I think being genuine, being honest, being transparent about things. So there are definitely a ton of different ways to, to grow your channel, but really it's more about growing your community and, and finding like-minded readers, that's, that's the goal at the end of the day. So I think you can definitely do that um, without focusing as much on the numbers. What are my favorite videos to film and watch? I love filming my Roll the Dice TBRs. I look forward to that every single month. It is my favorite thing. I love finding out what I'm going to read for the month or what I get to choose from for the month. It is so much fun. Keeps my reading exciting. So it works for me. I love it. Um, those are definitely my favorite to film. And my favorite to watch are probably challenge videos. And that's why I want to do more of them because I love watching them. Like anytime a booktuber tries another booktuber's favorite books or tries, you know, reading hyped books or under hyped books or whatever crazy category of thing that they're challenging themselves to do. I love seeing that kind of stuff. Um, the biggest problem with filming those videos and why you probably don't see them all over the place is because they take so much time to film. And for me, I have so many books that I already physically own that I want to get through. I can't yet justify buying more books for certain challenges that I have in my brain without first finishing a lot of the physical books I have on my shelves already. So for that reason, I don't do as many challenges as I would like to, but that's definitely something I would love to do next year is do some of these challenge videos because I love watching them. They're so entertaining. I also really like uh, tier ranking videos, but I film on my phone and I don't know how to do a tier ranking video on my phone. So <laughs> I've never done one. I've done one once, but I had to like put in a picture and then like edit in every single like movement <laughs> it was so tedious and horrible i don't i so i i don't know how to do tier ranking videos i don't know how but i love watching them so i wish i could do them but i feel like i can't do them while i'm filming on my phone one said what is your favorite booktuber for each genre i have so many so i'm gonna link a bunch of different channels that i adore down below and try to list them like by genre but a lot of them read like everything so take the genres with a grain of salt but it's just all those channels i adore watching a lot of people ask about like my favorite childhood book or what got me into reading that sort of thing i've always been a reader um so it's really hard to pinpoint like what exactly got me into reading because as a kid i was i loved reading uh, I will say what got me back into reading after college because I took this huge hiatus from reading, um, for fun at least, uh, through middle school, high school, college. So what got me back into reading was one of my dear, dear friends um, who has a book talk who, that I'm going to link down below. I do not have a book talk, but she does and she's fantastic if you want to check out her recommendations. Uh, she so kindly gifted me two books. She gifted me We Are Water by Wally Lamb and Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. And these two books were some of the first books that I read after college, and I was obsessed. Both of these were 
unbelievable. I loved them. Five stars easily. Loved them. Um, this one is like very, very hard hitting family drama. Like lots, lots of triggers. Like this one is very heavy content, but I loved it so much. And then this one, you've probably heard of it. You've probably seen the show. I think the book is better than the show. It is so juicy, mommy drama, like twisty. Oh my God, it's delicious. I loved these two books and these, I, I am convinced these are what got me back into reading. I was so obsessed with them. I think they were the first two on my bookshelf and I ended up filling up those bookshelves and now look at them. So yeah, these, these two. So thank you so much my dear friend but yeah so we're gonna stop there I, I know I didn't get to everybody's questions but thank you so so much to everyone who submitted a question and hopefully this was semi-interesting if you have any other questions um, that I didn't answer or anything like that please feel free to leave them down below and I can answer them but yeah thank you all so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up subscribe if you'd like to and I will see you all in my next one bye